Hey guys, it's Daniel. The following is from Kurt Cobain from September of 1989, where he discusses the origins of Nirvana. Quote, It was about four years ago. Chris, the bass player, and I tried to start off Nirvana in a small county about 130 kilometers from Seattle. This wasn't easy because in Aberdeen, our town, it's difficult to find dedicated musicians. The population is made up mostly of manual workers. So about a year and a half ago, we moved to Tacoma. Here, with the help from Dale Crover of the Melvins, we recorded a demo tape that got the attention of Sub Pop's Jonathan Pondman. Then, in Tacoma, we met Chad, the drummer, and with him we really started Nirvana. Shortly after that, I went to live in Olympia, while the other two stayed in Tacoma. Everybody in the Washington music scene knows each other well, and everyone usually cooperates with each other. For example, I play occasionally in the Go Team, as sort of a supergroup that Calvin from Beat Happening brings together occasionally. Recently, Chris, Mark Lanigan, and the drummer from The Screaming Trees, Mark Pickerel, and I recorded a single for Sub Pop consisting of two covers of Lead Belly. It'll be part of Sub Pop's Singles Club series. When we started Nirvana, we didn't even know that there were labels in existence interested in our kind of music. Then, when the first Sub Pop records came out, we were taken by surprise and we said, this is the best label we could record for. All of us Sub Pop acts play more or less hard music at a moderate tempo. All sub pop bands have their own distinct sound, and I don't like to be all tangled up with the others as if there were no differences. I don't think that all the sub pop bands are that similar. It's really hard in the late 80s to come up with the wholly original ideas, so the only alternative is to just rely on your own influences and make do with them. Thank goodness, in this respect, and this generally applies to the state of Washington, the influences that have been adopted are among the most honest and pleasing. Rock has been around for 30 years, and when you play with a 4-4 beat, you run out of ideas sooner or later. It all becomes unoriginal at some point. This is precisely the problem that contemporary rock is facing. We haven't had a really different band getting up on stage for at least three or four years. The influences are there in our music, clear as the sun. Yet, we're something original, and I can't explain it because it all takes place on the inside. We want to produce records that you listen to, not just ones you rock away to. So, not a record where you can drop the needle down anywhere, and it'll always be a hard, fast rock and sound. Sometimes I think that our music is maybe dance rock or something like that. 